Security bill reports uh, provides a total of $1.3 billion for working capital. Now, let me talk about defense health programs. We just saw what we went through with Walter Reed. Bill Young, who was chairman of the committee, and myself went out to Walter Reed all the time. I had no idea, as most members didn't, about what was going on at Walter Reed. And it was, it was, it really, it, 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 it gets to me that every time we went out there, we asked him if you needed any help. And they always told us everything's all right. We put more money in anyway because we knew there'd be some problems uh, come about because of the fact that they were under BRAC. The committee decided unanimously to eliminate uh, the, the, the closing of, of Walter Reed, especially during the time of war. We put $1.7 billion above the budget request. Additional funding is for $450 million for post-traumatic stress. And that's not near enough, folks. That is not near enough. We figured there's going to be 65,000 military people come back. You're going to have, you're going to have post-traumatic stress. And that's what you're voting against when you vote against this bill. We put $450 million in for traumatic brain injury care and research. $730 million to cover the funding shortfall created by Congress. Having disapproved the department's proposal to increase health insurance premium, and I'm for that, but we didn't fund it. But we fund it in this bill, and that's what you vote against if you vote against this bill. We put $62 million for amputee care. Let me tell you something about amputee care. I went out to the amputee center in Brooks. They put an intrepid civilian, civil, uh, private industry put up a, a place in 18 months. $58 million they raised to put an amputee center up. We, we've been working on an amputee center at Walter Reed and took us three years and it's still not built. Jerry Lewis, Bill Young, myself, and it's still not done yet. We're putting in uh, uh, $12 million for caregivers. The nurses called. They said, we got a real problem here. We see these wounded. We see the people coming home all the time. It affects us mentally. It affects us emotionally. It affects us uh, psychologically. We need help. So we put $12 million in, $6 million for Lonsdale, where they get the worst casualties. Two million for Walter Reed, two million for Brooks, and two million for for uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, hospital in, in California. Uh, we put 14.8 million for burn care. I want to tell you something, members. You can go to all the hospitals. When you go to the burn care centers, you see the results of this war. We go to the hospitals. All of you, all of us, go to the hospitals quite often. And I'm telling you, the burn centers are the worst uh, when you go. Now, we also took out 5% uh, on contracting. Now, why did we do that? We did that because contractors are falling all over themselves. And we asked the GAO and we asked the, the Inspector General of Iraq, how many contractors you have? They couldn't tell us. They said, help us find out how many contractors we have. So we put the Undersecretary of Defense. He couldn't tell us. He says, I'll let you know in a week. He still hasn't told us. So we took 5% out. They'll tell us now how many contractors they have. And we, we fenced 10 percent. So, so that's $800 million for the 5 percent, and then, then uh, 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 $1.6 million, $100 million, uh, $1.6 billion for the uh, contractors to come out. So that's $2.1 billion we've taken out for the contractors. Uh, uh, we put in for SERP, which is a program which $456 million provided under operation of maintenance money for the, for the uh, commanders. No permanent basis, we said over and over again. We put in uh, no torture, which has caused us so much problem when they didn't have the people trained when they were in uh, uh, Abu Ghraib. Uh, uh, contracting oversight, we have a, uh, an amendment in for death gratuity, an amendment. Military attorneys, we put some money in for military attorneys. Meeting readiness guidelines. Let me tell you what we do to meet readiness guidelines. Now, when you talk to these families, they need a year at home before they're redeployed. Is there anybody that thinks we should send these folks back before they have a year at home? Is there anybody that thinks we should extend them when they have 13 months in country? Is there anybody that thinks we should send troops into combat who aren't trained and ready? Is there anybody here? We put benchmarks in for the Iraqi government, as, as uh, the chairman of the committee explained. 
because we need to give them the incentive. We need them to have some benchmarks so they understand that they have to get this done. Every time something happens, and this is the problem we have, every time something happens, we step in. They started out with, they said 80% of the units, or 80% of the people were in the units that were deployed in Iraq, the Iraqi units. Now it's 50%. Where are they on leave? They're desert. They're not there. So who makes up the difference? Our troops are the one making up the difference. We have to force the Iraqis to make up the difference. Now why are we even thinking about forcing the military to break their own guidelines because of this surge, because of the fact they can't sustain the deployment. So the administration has decided we're going to have to send people back with less than a year at home. We're going to send people back that aren't trained and ready. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Every single member of Congress, we have an obligation to the taxpayer under the Constitution to take care of defense. We have an obligation to have oversight and auditing and accountability. We've had 14 her hearings so far. We'll have at least 40 more hearings before we have the base bill. And I'm going to put you on notice right now. The supplemental, the 08 supplemental is not going to come up with the base bill. The 08 supplemental is going to be held because we're going to see if there's going to be progress in this country before we bring up that 08 supplemental. And, and, and we're going we're gonna to see if what they say is true. We're going to find out if this administration is, is giving this effect. We have said to them, under the Moran Amendment, we said to them, you have to tell us how much oil production. Oil production is below pre-war level. Electricity production. Two more minutes. I yield two more minutes, the gentleman. Electricity gentleman, production minutes. below pre-war level. Unemployment is 60%. How else do you make incidents have doubled since I spoke out a year and a half ago? Doubled. They're now 1,200 a week. And when I say incidents, I'm talking about 140,000 troops deployed to Iraq individually. Indiv I heard I heard Elizabeth uh, Edwards the other day talk about breast cancer before she knew it had come back. And she said to me, there's 40,000 people that have breast cancer every year, but it's one at a time. What we're talking about are troops, 140,000 troops one at a time, 140,000 troops with families, 140,000 troops that have wives and husbands and mothers and fathers that have to suffer during these deployments. So don't think that when you go to the hospital, you see figures. Don't think when you say you, you see 2,500 people that, who have been killed, 33,000 have been killed, or, or 25,000 have been wounded. It's individuals that have been wounded, individuals have been killed, and those families are suffering. And we have to put some benchmarks so the Iraqis, they have a civil war, we have to put benchmarks in this bill so the Iraqis start to do it themselves and the Americans aren't forced to make up the, the difference and do it themselves.